Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse number 9. Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all. So all that God's given it to every man, the ability to earn money. Now the earth is, you, you've got everything that could be planted and fruits. All the raw materials are given to man to make a living so the king himself is served by the field this mighty ruler of all a particular nation who has a building a home grander than his servants and yet that guy eats the apples the green beans the the wheat He needs the crops too. He needs loyal servants and people of hard working. Listen, if America ever turned to complete welfare, and I believe that's the kind of thing that's going to be under the Antichrist, under the 666, but if America were to go completely under welfare and no one worked, which America is going to, no, there are no more jobs. Well, how will the president eat? How will the vice president eat? If the people, of the Americans can't work, you're going to have to rely on other nations, and then those nations will be over you. See, if you don't have workers, there's no food, plain and simple. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. I win the lottery. Hey, all my dreams are answered. You're not going to be content. You know, when I was 15 years old and I talked to my parents about getting a driver's license and, and getting a car, Insurance, and when we had that talk, and I must had to go to school to learn how to drive. I can't tell you how many cars I've had since that day. I can tell you the first car I had, an International Scout. Then you know, I don't even remember all the cars I've had. You're not content. And some of those cars I got rid of because there was another car. Ooh, I liked it. And I got that car. And then within time, you know, another car would have been just as better. You know, we moved out of the apartment house. We got a house. Hey! Well, now we got a camper to get away from the house. And what you're going to learn in life that there's always something more that you want. Adam and Eve fell in the same thing. They were in, they were in a perfect atmosphere life. Everything given to them with one restriction, and they weren't content. That's a sorry thought. Nor he that loveth abundance with increase. The more you get, what? You know the harder you're going to have to work to take care of it, to, to worry about it, to protect it? This is also vanity. The desire to be rich from the, from the Bible is vanity. And we've seen through Proverbs and we've seen through five chapters, five and a half. All die. I don't care if you can if you can live restaurant life three times a day, every day of your life, and have someone home cook meals, occasional restaurant. You're going to die. I don't care if you face your whole life on cow and the steak. You're going to die. 
as much as somebody who just eats rice, you're going to die. The person that has vaults and vaults of money, the ten top richest men in the world, are going to die along with the billions of the poorest people in the world. When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And when good is there to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes. The more you get from God, I'm talking about food, that is the main thing of human life, is food. We don't need money. Matter of fact, we would have a proper system if, if I grew corn in my backyard and I go next door to my neighbor who grows peas and bucket of corn for a bucket of peas. To a little peas and corn for the guy that has the cows across the street. The barber system is better than the, the money system. We live in a capitalistic system where those that have the money are not happy with, with the money they got, so they'll drain their employees just to get more. The owners, the increase helps them, but it should also help all those around them. You're going to end up, and I don't know how much a prophecy this is right, I could be wrong. But the way America's going today, you take the grocery store business. I've talked to a few people who are in management. There is coming a day when there will be food on the shelves full at the grocery store, but there are going to be people who don't have the money to buy them. You know, we got the electronic uh, cashiers that you can check yourself out, so we don't need the cashiers no more. We got these little buggies will bring the carriages back so we don't need a guy to go chase them anymore. We're going to do everything in robotic. And then you ain't got nobody to buy because you're not giving a paycheck. You give your employees a paycheck and they're going to buy your goods. Coal mining towns. The gold rush towns made a profit of, you know, we'll pay these people to do the work and then we'll buy, a, we'll buy and build a town, we'll own it, and we'll put our own laborers in that town and the stuff they buy is the companies. And that's how you hold people hostage. The sleep, okay, now we talked about the food, now it's the sleep. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet. Man, there's nothing like a hard day at work or me, hard day at night. And you're just tired and you lay down and that night you, you just fall right to sleep and you wake up in the morning and like, that is refreshing. You know, if you work like you, you're supposed to according to the Bible, 12 hours a day, hard manual work you wouldn't have time for the movie theater to watch uh filth on the screen you wouldn't have time to watch the tv filth on the screen you wouldn't have time to blow your money on iphones and other entertainment you'd be too tired by the work the the uh, i think the vineyard owner went out all day long looking for labor you know, that was hard labor. You're bending, you're stooping, you're getting up, you're picking, you're putting, carrying bushels, you're carrying buckets, you're walking. All day long, and you get your penny. You're not going to want to go dancing that night. You don't need about rubbing against flesh that's not your flesh. You go, and like we talked about uh, the last chapter, you go lay down with your wife and you put your arm around her and you two just fall asleep. Because she's been busy all day too. Listen, taking care of a house is not relaxation. 
especially two or three hours, the baby's going to wake up. And five or six o'clock in the morning, you got to get up and get the breakfast and everything. For when you've had that full day, there's nothing like bedtime and getting sleep. You know why most people in America can't sleep and you got to have drugs? Because they haven't pulled a full day's labor. They haven't worked hard enough. Whether he eat little, okay, the food, or much. I don't care if you sit down for a full meal. And you, you, you've been working all day. You're, you, oh. And even if you, you just, uh, honey, I'll just have, can you make me a couple pieces of dough, toast just to fill my stomach? And you know what? If you work hard that day and you're tired, you just go to sleep no matter how much is in your belly. Matter of fact, you know, with your belly being full, some foods, like me, spaghetti and all that, that knocked me out. That make it more refreshing. There are certain foods in your, that you, to your body, will cause more rest and relaxation. But the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. Worry, concern. Everybody going to show up to work tomorrow? Are they going to want more, more, more money, or are they going to strike, or they, they're going to walk out? Somebody going to hire them to pay them more? The locusts going to come? Listen, you win that million dollars, you all of a sudden got family you never even knew you had. You got phone calls, you got letters coming in. You got to hire a lawyer. You know, every time I see these people... Uh, they win, the, they win the lottery, and they finally come out. And you know what I always hear? They have to go hire a lawyer and an accountant, first of all, before they come out in the public. Why do you need that? Listen, when I check my bank to see if my check is in there, I don't need a lawyer. I don't need to worry. I, it's about the same. <coughs> so with rich, from a man who is rich, A ruler of a nation said, you know what? I don't get much sleep. And I go down to the servants' houses and they're snoring. No one's walking about. No one's bowling. No one's out having a good time. They're all in bed sleep. There is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun. Uh oh, a sore evil. Namely, riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. There is your capitalistic system, right there. I'm going to get it all! And you'll stand before God at the great white throne judgment and lose it all. But didn't I help the poor? Yeah, with other people's money. That don't count. Didn't I give money to the United Way? Didn't I give money to, to the Salvation Army? Didn't I? Hey, didn't you read that newspaper article? I put a thousand dollars. Yeah, but what'd you do about Jesus Christ? Yeah, what'd you do about the law? You know, if this guy had animals... He would have to mark every tenth animal and give that to God cheerfully, willingly. The tithes and the wheat and everything. Money gain in a capitalistic system, Solomon says, is a sore evil and it's to their hurt. There was a time in Tracy and my generation. We're in our 40s. We remember a time when there was absolutely nobody open on Sundays. I remember a certain time after, I don't know, I'm going to say 6 o'clock, and I could be wrong. Everything was closed. You had to wait till the next day. And <coughs> forget the fact is, on Thanksgiving, if you forgot to get the stuffing, 
you had to wait till Friday. Stores weren't open. I was going to just say, no, there was no 24-hour store. You couldn't buy liquor where I come from after a certain time and on certain days. Now, that may have changed. That is not so in, in Florida. Florida, you can buy it anywhere and, and any time you want. At the drugstore, we got a full line of, of liquor. Yeah, excuse me. Can I get a bottle of that JD? Can I get a case of this beer? Can I get some of that wine? And I need my prescription for my liver. J.C. Penny was a Christian that gave his employees the days off on church service day. Now, I thank God somebody in my place is allowing me to have days off for church. Thank God for that. Not all employers are like that. I sat under a desk of a hiring guy for one of the biggest soft drink companies in the world. Tell me, I don't care about your, your church service. You're going to be hired at this company. You're going to work when we tell you to, when you're going to work. I don't care about your church. Fine. Bye. You don't need to go any further. You can take the stuff you snort and, uh, and whatever you want to do. There was a time when they gave their employees rest. They gave them good insurance that we didn't need the government to step in. And they fairly paid their, their people where they could pay their bills and make a living. But in America today, we have too many people who don't want to work for a living. And we got to be taxed and we got to give them all kinds of things that they don't deserve. And that falls on the business owner. And in America today, if you're a business owner, you, the government tells you who you can hire, what you can hire, what you must do, and what you can't do. So the, even the business owners are under the tyrancy of a government that doesn't even know what a government is. But riches is an evil, a sore evil, and to their hurt. And it's the love of money. That's the root of all evil. Money has now money's not a sin, but money has a sin. The more you get, the, the more you, you turn to love it, and then it becomes a sin. Money's not the sin. It's I want more. I'm not happy. I'm not content with what I got. But those riches, okay, of chapter 13. Perish by evil travail. And that travail is that extreme pain that a woman gets at delivery of a baby. That's interesting. That's a, the extreme pain that a woman gets. And when you lose those riches, it's like giving birth. Riches perish. You lose it all. There was a time in America when everything, the bank system fell, and people were jumping out of the windows and off rooftops. For what? Their wife was, was diagnosed with, with a, a uncurable cancer? No. Their child had been hit by a car? No. The word of God was being burned? No. You were being arrested and, and, and whipped for being a Christian? No. What was it all about? The loss of money. Yeah, but how many people did survive through the Depression? My grandparents survived. I won't tell you how they survived, but they survived. I've seen pictures of the Great Depression of guys sitting in New York City selling apples. For some people, the loss of money is that's it, it's death, it's gold. Some people it's like, well, can't lose what I never had. <laughs> 
And what I had, the Bible says, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. I pay my bills faithfully and try and pray to the Lord about it. And he begetteth a son, and there is nothing in his hand. Look at this. We got travail, pain, and, and childbirth. Extreme pain. I, I don't know. Maybe put a couple extreme. I don't know. I'm a man. Extreme, extreme pain. If I lost my money, and now we have a son that there's nothing to give to him. That's a foolish father. How did he lose all that? You mean you can't give him a dollar? It says nothing. Well, I can't give you great grandma's watch because I had to pawn that. It's the pawn shops now. I have nothing. You know, I may die with no money. But I have given the children in my family the Bible and the Word of God. That's not nothing. That's everything. I've taught my children about stealing, about adultery, and all the Ten Commandments and everything in the Bible that I know. To go out there and rely on God to get them by. And as they sin and do wrong, they will be held accountable to that God. This guy has nothing to offer. That's bad. As he came forth from his mother's womb, again, riches are associated with a pregnancy. The woman produces the children. The man has produced the money. And yet, the man has taken the money more than his wife more than his children. In the last verse, he lost it all. This verse, let's say he keeps it all. Naked shall he return to go as he came. Now, the last time I knew when a child is born, money doesn't come out. Gold and silver don't come out. Credit cards don't come out. The baby and the afterbirth comes out. I'm not trying to be sick. That baby li lies in the mother's arms. Upon her breast. And the parents... Now owe money. More. That child came in with nothing. He doesn't even come with clothes. He doesn't even have berry hair. Naked. Empty. And can't do nothing for himself. He shall return to go as he came. I don't wear the custom of, dr of dressing up a, a body in, in a coffin. That's foolish. You might as well lay that body in that coffin, naked. And I know they have a coffin. There's a little box you can put jewelry and stuff in that. Let's get rid of that. That's foolish. I told the guy. I'm not paying for that. What's the body going to do with that? You're dead. You can't do nothing with it. You go out of this world as you came in. Nothing. And you can't do nothing for yourself. There is no parking spot at New Jerusalem for used U-Hauls.
In hell, you don't have big moving trucks that you can unload. Even if they put a gold necklace around you, you're not taking that with you into eternity. It's going to stay there. Look at the pharaohs in Egypt. All their goods, all their riches, all their mummies, all they had in their tombs are in museums, are in people's private collections, or somewhere not with the pharaohs. And when you study that in the public school system, you should get a little sense of, hey, hey, they couldn't take it with them. What makes you think I can? There are people in this generation today are, are being buried or going to be buried with their expensive car, with their jewelry. Ain't going to do you no good. And you follow this up with Job 1, 2, Psalms 49, 17, Luke 12, 20, and 1 Timothy 6, 7. You're not going to take it with you. If you're going to get any gold and silver from God, it'll be much better than the gold and silver that's down here. I guarantee it. Everything today is cankered with the curse of Genesis 3. The gold, silver, precious stones, and, and the white linen that you get from God in heaven are without sin, are purity from the one that is God, the Creator. He shall take nothing of his labor. There's some foolish woman of a religion who was buried with a telephone. I'll call you when I... No, you didn't. I'm the top of this country. Uh, this company or country, whatever you want to call it. For what? What are you going to do with that when you're dead? You're an airplane, airplane crashes in the middle of the ocean, you're down, you're now fish food. What good does it do it for you? Your private jet slams into a mountain, burns all, and what, what, what does that private jet do for you? Which he may carry away in his hand. You can carry it away on the earth. When I go to work, I'll take a bag and I've got some medicine in there, I'll have lunch and I can carry that but if I die that I won't carry that bag nowhere listen the medicine ain't gonna do me no good I won't need it but if you die and go to hell all you can you can put all the the, the pharmacy in your casket put it all in there all the pain reliever ain't gonna do you no good surround your body with butter if you're going to go to hell, it ain't going to relieve you of the burns you're going to get. A pharmacist may go to hell, but he ain't going to help you. And this also is a sore evil. All right, here's another one. That in all points, as he came, so shall he go, naked naked you work for everything you end up naked now remember we're looking at what's under the sun we're not looking at eternal we're not looking at Jesus Christ now everything you do for Jesus Christ there will be a reward but we're not talking about that here we're talking about planet earth and making a living and a living for self Listen, you can spend all the money in, for a child that's dying. The child's going to die someday. Death is coming. You may prolong it, but it will die. And those medicines, and those cures, and those cure-alls are not going to stop it. You can be number two rich man in the whole entire world. And when that doctor says it's terminal, and there is absolutely nothing we can do, your money ain't going to do you nothing. 
Now, there's a guy who got this disease that supposedly no one can be cured of, and he has a lot of money. And it was amazing that this disease he got, he was cured with. I used his money, I guess. But when God says your time is up, what are you going to do? Offer him a hundred bucks? No, you'll just leave that behind. You'll leave the bank accounts behind. You'll leave everything behind. So, another sort of trail is that you can't take it with you. And what profit has he that has labored for the wind? You work for everything. What's under the sun, what's in life, and you go to the casket. You might like grinders. Everyone can sit around your grinder and have a have a, a, around your casket and have a grinder. You're not going to enjoy. Even they put one on your chest, in your hand. You're not going to enjoy it. Grinders was his number one food in life. Close it, and that grinder will be dissolved and gone, not by you. And that goes with relationships too. That goes with your spouse. That goes with your children. That goes with your parents. That goes with your family. That goes with your friends. Your pastor. Your deacon. All will die. For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin. You earn something through life. Wages of sin. All your sin will cause you to die. All his days also he eateth in darkness. Now with John chapter 3, that doesn't mean he doesn't have the light side. I mean, he eateth in evil and wickedness. Without God. And he has much sorrow and wrath with his sickness. What's the sickness? Well, what we've been talking about is being rich. And he does it all without God. And he has sorrow and anger. That's not the place to be. This guy's doing it without God. And then there's no reward. We're not talking about the Christian. There is no Christian. I don't even know of an Old Testament Jew if he did everything he was supposed to. The only thing I can see in the Bible is he gets the new earth. I don't read anything about them getting crowns or anything like the Christian does. He gets the glorified Garden of Eden. Now, I could be wrong about that. Maybe they do get I mean, if you find it, show me. Us that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and Christ who died for our sins, our righteousness in Christ, the rewards we get for what we do for Christ. And I can lose them if I sin or if I do wrong or if I do it for me. Behold, that which I have seen. Now, read the entire book. It is good and comely, common for one to eat and to drink. Enjoy the good of his labor that he had taken under the sun all the days of his life. You work, enjoy your life. Enjoy it with your spouse. Enjoy it with your family. Enjoy it with your church. Enjoy it with God. He's not proposing a religion here, eat, drink, and be merry. We haven't finished the verse. 
Take your family out to a restaurant. Buy them ice cream sundaes. Buy them whatever. You know, go out and smile and giggle and have a good time. Pay your bills. Earn what you get. And you still can enjoy it. And that way when you do go off into the death, as far as we're looking to the, the world eternal here, it will leave your family with memories. When you drive by that, they drive by that place, it may bring a tear to I remember dad would bring us there. Or I remember that was mom's favorite spot. That will last. Kept all the money in the bank account. Never spent anything. Listen, I, I, one of my family members was like that. And in the end, everything was put to a yard sale. It was squandered. And with that person, you know, I, I had the very vague remember. I don't know how old I was at. I remember it was, it was so funny to take this person for the forever first time in his life and, and anything after that. There was no time before it. It was no time after. It took me to McDonald's to get lunch. It was, it was comical to watch. He had no idea. And I remember that day. I remember that event. I don't know if it was a joy to him. I can go a thousand other stories. You know, not to mince old. Money was there. Uh, yeah, I said too much already. Which God giveth him, for it is, is his portion. God says go to work. God says labor for, for your money. And God says enjoy it. If you don't enjoy your life, you're missing out. And listen, we're talking saved or lost. God giveth rain upon the just and the unjust. Rain is a blessing. Rain is a gift of God. Rain does a lot. Paul says, listen, if you're married, husband or wife, it'd be better for you to take that $20 and, and do something for your spouse that has a need than 20 missionaries a dollar each. You may just have to buy her a box of chocolate. That's what she loves. To say, I love you. And to cheer her up. And so be here. Enjoy with you, with the family, what you have done. Work was never meant to be miserable. Because work was before the, before the curse. And what was the reward that God offered to Adam? Eat freely of anything in the garden. Except for one thing, but we won't get into that. You want a pearlmatic bed? We'll just lie down with the lions and they'll give you a perfect pearlmatic bed. And is it too high for you? Call one of those yellow, or what are you going to call that thing? Giraffe? Okay. Call one of those giraffes over and they can reach the highest tree. If not, you call, what are you going to call one of them? Monkey? Okay. You call one of the monkeys down, and they'll, they'll throw coconuts down at you. You just got to duck, and they like, they'll like to aim it at you. But you call the monkeys, they'll get the coconut down off the trees later. Okay? You got too much grass? You call, what are you going to call that? You're going to call that a cow. Okay. You call the cow in here, and he will clip the grass for you, and fertilize it, and give you some milk. That's all for you for free, Adam. What? You don't have a help me? Lay down, take a little nap, let me give you a help me. Here she is, Adam. To your perfect I mean, listen, I guarantee Eve was to everything that Adam wanted. I'm not trying to be gross or anything, but I guarantee everything that Adam liked that was in Eve. There she is, Adam.
You know what God told David after he committed sin with Bathsheba? He said, hey, I give you anything. You, you wanted more wives? You, you wanted that? I would have done it for you. You didn't have to do the adultery. You didn't have to do the murder. God wants to bless us rightfully and wholly and righteously, not sinfully. So we can give honor and praise to God and not the employer. Do you thank your employer for that check or do you thank God for it? Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth. God will give some people riches and wealth. There's nothing wrong with riches and wealth. What do you do with it? Who do you love? And has given him power to eat thereof. Not all rich men can eat. Their stomachs are too wound up with all the ulcers and all the problems. Maybe they don't have teeth. I'm losing my teeth, but God's given me the grace and glory. I still can chew. And I'm not rich. I'm rich in the Lord. I'm rich in the blessings of God, but anybody who looks at my life under the sun, they, he's middle class. No, I'm high class with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thankful every day, 365 days of the year, not just one. And to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is a gift of God. People, when you sit down for a meal and you can eat it from the labors that you've done, as much as Jesus Christ is the gift of God, so is your ability to enjoy what you do from your job. God is giving you that. Have you thanked them, or do you wait for one time in a year? For he shall not much remember the days of his life, because God answered him in the joy of his heart. Forgetfulness may come. Death will come. Listen, death, there's no remember. I don't think I'm going to know what, what pork and bacon is in heaven. I have no idea if I'll know what ice cream is. But I know what it is today. And listen, when you can, when I can sit with my wife and, and come home from work and, and a little bit tired and say, Hey, McDonald's French fries. Yeah, let's go. Get dressed. Let's go. Let's go enjoy some french fries. I know why they call them golden fries because that's about the price of gold today. But we need to sit down with, with french fries together. Amen. Well, how much would you check to? It was just my. What are we going to do with the money? We're going to just gonna keep it in the bank. We're, we're gonna, no, we'll pay the bills and the rest will just keep it in the bank. For what? Nothing to keep it in the bank. That's not right. You don't know when you're going to die. And I'm not telling you neither to go out and spend, 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 spend. I'm not telling you that either. You've got bills to pay. You pay your bills. I put a little in the bank for a rating day. I, I do that. You've got to get the balance of life on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being, you know, excessive spending. 10, not enough spending. You've got to do it right by 5. You can't have creditors coming after you because you're not paying them. And you can't deprive yourself. 
Listen, you can't have buttered toast 365 days a year. Buy yourself some cereal. Buy yourself a ham sandwich. Get a grinder. Enjoy a pizza if that's your thing. But don't let all your money go just to waste. God has given us the ability and the gift to enjoy what we do. But we rather gripe and complain and, 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 and eh, not enough and not make enough money. Blah, 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 blah. You know, even the Israelites in the wilderness did not enjoy what God gave them, the manna. The manna got tiring after a while. The quails, I think it was the quails, they just started eating without cooking. We want to go back to Egypt. We enjoy the leeks and the onion and whatever the whole list is there. They weren't enjoying it. And God had to destroy them. You know, maybe by your life, paying your bills, your family happy in the Lord, you are happy with the Lord, and when you bow your head, you're not just saying grace. You're thanking God. Maybe God says, you know what? I'm going to let that guy live one more day, because I want to hear one more day someone praise me for giving them a job and giving them something to enjoy in their life and seeking me to pay their bills, and they're doing it all right. I'm going to give him one more day because I want to hear that praise from him. I want to hear that prayer from him. I enjoy. I don't know. As we close off another chapter.